everyone, welcome and my name is Chris White, I'm the Manager for Capital Projects. I'm really pleased to be here to provide as much information as possible. Um, a bit of history and context as far as the, um, where the funding came from. Um, the funding did come from the Federal Government and initially we've had seed funding to undertake feasibility works. And that really is to understand both the technical side of um, is it actually um, viable to construct a car park in locations within Camberwell um, and to understand items such as either contamination, geotechnical, what sort of um, likely numbers are we to yield? Um, we also use this funding to get background information. Um, so we um, engaged market researchers to really um, dig down into some broader um, surveys across the community to give us representative data that we go into a little bit further on in the presentation. And um, this was really important funding in order for us to um, get a greater understanding of what the um, opportunities and the constraints um, existed for this funding. Um, this funding is actually part of the government's $4 billion rollout um, for congestion funding, of which um, $650 million sits within commuter car parks. The City of Burundara has um, been offered a number of sites um, to investigate the feasibility um, being at three locations, um, Camberwell being one, um, the other two being Glen Ferry and Canterbury. So it's a fairly large investment by the federal government and their real aim is to um, obviously reduce congestion. They want to encourage people um, to either use transport who currently aren't using transport or potentially even increase the number of, um, uh, increase the number of times that they use and access public transport. It's also around traveling less distance um, in their car from their point of origin. Um, to their place of work or their study. So it really is to um, reduce the length of time that cars are on the roads and through that reducing congestion. So some key conditions of this funding is that um, the federal government um, was very keen for council to explore sites that were council owned and operated, um, mainly because at the end of the day, um, that is where we have um, control of the land, is land that we own. Um, also, the car park must be provided um, free of charge, and um, that is something that we're very committed to, although we have stated to the federal government that may need periodic review, but at this stage, very committed to the free of charge parking. Um, how we've used this seed funding, as I said, we've explored a number of sites within Camberwell, and we um, inform the residents within 500 kilometres um, late last year of the sites that we were investigating, that being um, Harold Street predominantly and the Junction West, which is the existing multi-west car park. Um, offline, we also um, investigated Station Street car park um, as part of the options. Um, that was quickly taken off our agenda, mainly around the um, very, very high cost to undertake realisations for that particular site. We um, use the funding to really try to dig down a bit deeper into what the impacts on local community might be. Um, we anticipate that um, concern around an increase in um, car park and congestion on local roads might be one of the issues. Um, what the car parking might look like, how, you know, how does it add to the urban realm? Um, that was really important to us because if this was to proceed, um, it is really important in these um, areas that have some fantastic heritage buildings, et cetera, that we actually add um, to the amenity of the area and don't detract from it. And that we add value to our um, um, to the broader community, not just to commuters, um, was something that we really wanted to explore further. If we proceed and council supports this, currently um, on the table is funding from the federal government of $20 million for Camberwell. Um, this will be all subject to um, further explorations um, when we do our final costings, et cetera. The sites, as I discussed, um, there's a total of three sites that council is exploring on council owned sites. 
There is a fourth site being Surrey Hills. That site is currently being explored by the state government, but also um, will be receiving federal government funding um, in order to support commuter car parking. All um, at Camberwell, um, it's a junction, a fairly significant junction station being um, the interchange for Lilydale, Belgrave and Alamein lines. Um, so it is probably a fairly popular station given that it has a number of access paths. As mentioned, um, it's really important to us uh, that there are community benefits um, to any potential um, change in car parking within Camberwell. So whilst the aim of the federal government funding, which we need to be very mindful of, is to create more long-term car parks for the purpose of a park and ride as an interchange um, mode um, to enable people to um, access train and tram by being able to get there by a car initially and then to access other forms of transport. What's important to us and one of the key reasons that we um, landed on a preferred site being the existing Junction West car park is it's an existing multi-deck structure. It's fairly utilitarian in its appearance. Um, it's got ordinary sort of galvanised um, framing around the external periphery. It's pretty much concrete grey um, internally. Um, particularly as a female, I know when you walk in it, there's parts that are quite dark, a bit grungy, um, not particularly um, a welcoming or a desirable place to visit. So we see this as an opportunity to upgrade an existing structure that um, isn't, um, I suppose, what you'd call state-of-the-art sort of car park design, um, to improve things like safety um, with better lighting, very clear, um, high visibility, um, improving access, there currently is no lift. So for anyone with mobility issues, it really is poor navigation to get to uh, the level of car parking that you need to. So there's the ability to retrofit this structure um, with lifts, which is quite significant work to do that retrofitting, but there's an opportunity to do that through this federal government funding. Um, amenity and overall, um, uh, appearance, particularly from the external as well as the internal, is quite important. Um, it's, as I said, it's not a particularly um, amazing structure. It's very much utilitarian in its style. Um, I don't know if anyone's visited the Cato um, car park that was undertaken in Paran a few years, but modern car parks typically now have fantastic painting um, to help navigate people so you clearly see which. Um, floor that you're on. You can have sensor parking, those sorts of things to help you know where there's available parking. There are lots of sort of smart technology that can be introduced into um, car parks that makes it a lot more desirable as um, a, a place to go. So that's something that we would really like to explore as part um, if this was to proceed across the car park. So whilst this is about adding an additional level to create additional long-term parking, part of the package that we've presented to the federal government is it has to be more than just the additional parking. It has to offer something back to the community. Um, and so therefore um, the funding will be stretched to enable that whole car park to have a facelift, so to speak. Um, and the cladding from the outside, there's also opportunity um, to look at um, how we can prevent um, I suppose, car light shining into adjacent properties. There are some adjacent properties on some boundaries. Um, how the amenity from the external can look a lot better. There's cladding, there's greening, there's um, quite a few different methodologies to improve the visual amenity there. Making it feel safer, that's a lot about lighting. We can also explore CCTV, but very much with working conjunction with Vic Pole um, to get and get some advice on whether that's required, but there are all options available to us as well for safety. And importantly, how you navigate the car park, because one of the things that we know is once you exit the car park, you kind of just get dumped into the sea of car parking around Herald Street. Um, there are some pedestrian links, but um, if you want to go to the station, most people would walk in that laneway um, near Gasman to get to Burke Street and then up to the station. And you have to walk and navigate um, Harold Street car park, which is not the um, 
you know, the funnest thing to do. There is no clear definition of where a pedestrian should go. So this proposal would um, enable re re relocation of some of those car parks in Harold Street, putting them into this centre to create a clear and safe um, pedestrian link so people can navigate that space without feeling, um, you know, that their, their safety is in jeopardy. Um, this is an, a new issue. We know that the Harold Street car park um, can be challenging at the best of times and Castle has invested a lot in the past few years in improving those pedestrian links, but we see that there's more that we can do to support that. Um, some of the other benefits is that there's a combination of more short and long-term car parks. The long-term car parks are very much there around supporting commuter car parking, particularly that Monday to Friday time frame um, at that peak use from 6 a.m. to 5 p.m. is you know where we see the long-term car parking coming to, to play. The short-term car parking is important because we don't want to lose um, any of the existing numbers of short-term car parks because we know at peak times on weekends and that parking is in demand within um, precinct shopping centres. So it's important that if we need to relocate that those remain as short-term car parks to um, support trade and, and local economy and vibrancy. We also know, and I suppose local residents particularly would know, any shopping centre um, car parks are all, always in high demand and people will park on local streets um, if they're unable to get closer to um, shopping um, centres. So we see this as an opportunity to particularly on weekends increase the number of available car parks for other uses that really benefit the community around shopping and dining. Um, going to the cinema, etc. Uh, these car parks can come into play. I'm happy just to take on the process for decision making. There's a number of stages in the project and decision points um, that we call milestones. So initially we started off with feasibility studies, as I touched on very much, that was around the technical data, um, you know, undertaking surveys, engaging traffic consultants, um, doing ball samples to understand what the soil consists of, geotechnical, um, engaging um, a structural engineer to understand um, the current structure and confirming that the existing structure was built and can support an additional level. So structurally it was built for that. So we've had those technical aspects um, explored and confirmed. Um, looking at um, what the design is, which comes into play, Nadia will pick that up and, and talk us through uh, what the potential yield and what the design could look like. Um, we've also engaged artists because really exploring well, what could we get out, what would this you know, potentially look like and it's important for people to have that visual image of what could be um, and undertaking early cost estimates that will continuously need to be refined as the project um, advances. Um, in December, um, we collated those findings and we briefed council on those um, technical findings. We're now in the community engagement phase um, which is a really important phase because we know that the people most impacted are the people who live closest. Um, and we really need to understand um, concerns and part of today is to have questions asked and, and to respond to those to the best of our um, ability to give you information so you can um, tell council what you actually think about this potential project. Uh, the survey is open currently and it goes through to 12 um, on the 10th of February, 12 noon, I think, on the 10th of February 2022. Um, the session from the 14th of December right through to February is an extended consultation period because we're acknowledging that it is over the festive season and most people will go away for two or three weeks. And so we needed it to be an extended length to enable people to have time to consider and to complete the survey. The following the close, there really is quite a lot of collation of those findings, um, revision of cost estimates that we will undertake, 
um, prior to um, a council report on the 28th of March. And that's a really key decision point, um, a major milestone around um, councillors really analysing, considering the entire package of information, the feasibility, the background reports, and, um, and the feedback from the community around what do they think about this additional car parking? What are their concerns? Because it really is important that those concerns can be um, addressed, designed out, mitigated, um, um, if this was to proceed. So stage one uh, in the feasibility studies, um, we only, as I mentioned before, looked at existing council owned um, spaces. Uh, we didn't look at any existing um, other types of spaces like open spaces, et cetera, because we know that they're really important to the community. Uh, the three sites that were looked at, Station Street, Harold Street and Junction West. And um, as I stated, site ownership, that was uh, a yes, no type scenario. Um, looking at the spatial constraints of the site, um, looking at the footprint, the yield, working with traffic consultants um, to do preliminary design. So we really understood what could be achieved. Understanding underground services or other overlays, um, such as flood overlays, uh, was a really important process in determining the viability from a technical perspective, um, whether things could be achieved or would have a significant impact on budget um, were all considerations. Looking at easements, those sorts of things that might constrain how the site could be um, um, developed and looking at early costings um, with quantity surveyors to see where does this sit within the current potential um, funding that the federal government has on the table. The locations and the distribution of these sites, uh, you can see the blue being Harold Street car park, you'll be familiar with red being the site of the Junction West car park and the Station Street car park um, being the one that supports sites such as the Camberwell um, Fresh Food Market. <clears throat> what we found was Station Street car park, whilst it had viability, obviously you can get a lot of car parking there, it came out, one of the things we know with that site is it is what I call a bit of the jewel in the crown. It's a large site, there's a lot of businesses that um, front onto that car park. It also houses the tram um, electrical substation, which is quite a large building. And there is um, initial works being undertaken around the urban design framework for that area. Something like that that's quite significant really does need that fairly um, lengthy investigation into the strategic direction and what that should become. Um, and so, um, I suppose just putting in a car park there without knowing how that really fits into an urban design framework would be um, a bit, we would be hesitant to enter that space. And we therefore just thought, well, let's run the process from a, how many car parks could you get in there? You exclude almost a third of the car park, given that there's significant infrastructure that would really constrain development. Um, and knowing that the community in this space would pretty much be requesting that to be an underground car park. We did the costings on that um, basis um, and the cost of it came out significantly higher um, in the multi, multi millions. Um, and therefore we quickly took that off the table. We therefore really focused on the two smaller sites being Harold Street Car Park and Junction West Car Park. And both of these have the ability from us a technical um, they could be done, they could be relatively within the budget parameters. Um, and so they had that um, facility going for them. But the Harold Street car park, the problems we found there was through the risk mapping. Um, oh, these are the sort of detailed feasibilities that we, we found on it. Um, the risk mapping, we looked at the scoping and timelines, um, the geotechnical, et cetera. Um, on all those sites, and I'll just see with the next map was how we how we undertook it. So I'll go back to this with the Harold Street um, car park. We undertook this feasibility, but we found a number of site constraints. 
um, including items such as um, access to the loading dock. So we have fairly heavy vehicles and truck movements going through there that constrain the side and increase, I suppose, risk to pedestrian movements. And the urban interface to the street frontage of Harold Street with a multi-deck in that location um, really had some um, significant shortfalls. Um, and, and therefore the Junction West Car Park, given that it's an existing multi-deck, has been built for an additional level and has the ability to improve the existing structure came out through the feasibility findings as a preferred site. How we informed the community, going back to July last year, we letterboxed um, residents and there's about three and a half thousand letters sent out to advise people of that feasibility works so that people were aware of it. Touching really again on some of the community considerations, um, the height of the car park was something that we really needed to explore knowing that it had to respond to the urban fabric um, and be sensitive to surrounding heights. And this site is quite interesting because it's a combination of some incredibly tall buildings, um, including um, the old, the, the wells. And um, you can see in the background there, just the height of surrounding buildings. But we also know that there's um, single double storey type buildings also um, in the location. So it has a fairly diverse realm of public interface and we knew that we had to respond in a sensitive way to how that integrated. Whatever we do, the contribution to the amenity of surrounding and the neighbourhood character is important to us. So use of excellent design, being sensitive to materials, um, consideration of um, more sustainable materials where possible, um, trying to uh, engage with local suppliers would be important to us um, if this project should proceed. Importantly, those pedestrian connections um, across to the train station are really critical. And looking at opportunities to improve green on the building or surrounding the building to, um, you know, we know that research talks about greening is really important to um, people's health and wellbeing. So maximising that as much as possible to the surrounds of um, any development would be important and to look at canopy cover and opportunities also to harvest water where possible or to access solar. Um, we want these systems to be as closed loop as possible, meaning that whatever energy needs to be used to run lights, et cetera, during the day to make the building safe, we really want to generate that from the site itself. Um, so that we're, we're being as light touch as possible um, in how we go about it. We also acknowledge that as an intermode um, location, it's not always cars. Some people will ride their bikes and they don't want their bikes just out in the weather. So having some sort of bike storage as well as hoops um, is important for us to consider as part of um, the more technical side of it all if this was to proceed. Um, consideration of DDA car parking, et cetera. And really importantly for us, looking at an existing structure in this location with better lighting, better access through new lifts and um, better um, facade treatment to what is there um, are all really um, sort of fairly significant benefits that could be realised potentially if council was to proceed with this. We know that car parking is always a hot topic in local government. Um, it's not new to Camberwell. It's probably all across Australia and every um, you know, more urban and built environments. Council undertakes consultation on a regular basis, including our Burundara community plan, where people often give uh, um, their voice and opinions. And this is just a snapshot from some of the views that we've heard through the planning phase. And as you can see on the right hand side, um, it shows talking about access to public transport, um, parking's really hard to get, can you improve um, traffic management and increase parking limits, it's hard to get a park and visit my local businesses, um, can you improve parking for those using public transport, 
um, since the zoning of parking in the streets around the train stations in the area. And we know that tension does exist there because as people use street parking, residents request from council, can you put parking permits in place for residents? And therefore that pressure sort of moves people out and out um, to find parking in other locations. On the flip side, we also know that people talk about, you know, promote active transport, um, restrict parking, have less cars, ride bikes more. Um, and it's really important for us to acknowledge this isn't a simple issue. This is actually a really complex issue because there is always a diverse range of views and a diverse range of needs. Um, and, um, you know, it's likely some of this um, opposing type information is likely to come out through this consultation um, based on history where we know that these issues are not simple, they are quite complex. So it's a challenge for councillors um, and council officers to navigate this and having this consultation, understanding the feasibility and looking at what we can get out of this process um, is where we hope to land and present this information to council for consideration.